Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Adobe for Education Summit 2021. Uh, I'm Laura, and I'm really excited to talk to you today and demonstrate Fresco to you. So without further ado, let's get started. I'm going to share my screen. I hope everyone can see. So Adobe Fresco Drawing and Painting. So I'm Laura. Uh, I'm a product manager on the Adobe Fresco team. Uh, Adobe Fresco is Adobe's dedicated drawing and painting application. Uh, we launched it on the iPad um, in 2019. Uh, and Fresco really offers an exciting way for students to express their ideas creatively. And I'm really uh, super excited to share an update of both its new features as well as a sneak peek of some of the upcoming features. So uh, what I'll cover today is talk a little bit about what is what Fresco is for people who don't know, why we created the app, um, a demonstration of um, current features as well as upcoming features, um, and a little overview of uh, what's on our roadmap leading up to Max. And um, I'm going to close by uh, showing you how you might be able to join our pre-release program if you're interested. So what is Adobe Fresco? Adobe Fresco, as I mentioned earlier, is a drawing and painting application. Um, it was designed initially um, for iPad and Stylus, and more recently we also uh, supported on win all Windows devices that meet its GPU requirements, as well as the iPhone. So you can use Fresco on the iPad, on iPhone, as well as on Windows devices. And here are some amazing pieces of art created by uh, artists that we've commissioned to create work on uh, Fresco. You can see that the artwork is very, very diverse. Um, Fresco supports both vector as well as pixel brushes. And so the, the breadth and variety of work that you can create is really um, astounding. So um, why did we create Adobe Fresco? Um, so, you know, everybody's uh, familiar with Photoshop. People have always um, painted and drawn in Photoshop. Uh, however, Photoshop, as you know, is a complex program. Its main focus is photo manipulation. Uh, many artists use photo Photoshop to draw, but it's not a dedicated drawing and painting application. Um, so we, we looked at that and we said, you know, just like Lightroom was created for photographers, we wanted to create a special app specifically for illustrators. Um, and as some of you may know, we did have um, drawing and sketching apps in market, Adobe Photoshop Sketch, which was a pixel-based app, and Adobe Illustrator Draw, a vector-based app. These were, you know, nice apps to draw in more for uh, beginners. So we, we wanted to take the best of draw and sketch and combine it into a new app, but a new app that also is geared for professional illustrators, but with a simple enough interface that anyone can actually pick up the app and use it. And so this is sort of what Fresco looks like. Um, as I mentioned, it's it combines the beautiful power of Photoshop in terms of drawing and painting capabilities, but yet the interface is simple. Anybody can just open the app and pick up a brush and start painting. So I won't go into the roadmap just yet. First, I'm going to jump and show you a demo. So I'm going to mirror my screen. One second. Let's see. Hold on just a sec. Great. All right, you should be seeing my iPad, hopefully. I'm just going to sign in here. Great. So uh, when you first come into Fresco, this is what you will see. Um, the thing that I want to walk you through is first the interface. So if you look on, on the right hand side, actually, before I go, I'm going to um, turn on show touches, which is a way for me to uh, basically show a little dot wherever I'm putting my cursor down so you know where I'm tapping on the interface. 
So this is the Fresco home homepage. Um, here you will see a way to start a new document. You'll be able to import a PSD file from here. Uh, up on the top right, you will be able to tap to view what are all the new features that we just added um, to Fresco. So you see a little visual as well as an explanation paragraph of, of the new feature. So you can just scroll through that and look at all the new features we've added. Um, you, you will be able to see all of your recent work. Um, and there's a dot, dot, dot here where you can um, drop down and rename a particular document, export, duplicate delete and so on. Um, then if I tap down to your work, these are essentially, this is essentially all of your work and you can uh, filter the work down or organize it by date modified, created or by its name. Um, if somebody has shared a document with you, it will show here. If you deleted a document, it will show here. Um, if you want to permanently delete something that you move to the deleted folder, you just tap on the dot, dot, dot and you say permanently delete. Um, and you can just go ahead and delete a particular document. So another exciting thing is that we have a learn tab over here. So the learn tab uh, has two sections. The top section are hands on tutorials, which are essentially walk through tutorials. Um, they take you step by step through uh, different facets of the art. For example, in this case, there's selection. So there are different cards that you can walk through. There's a little Tinkerbell uh, outlining the thing that the card is talking about. You can tap next to go to each of the different cards to understand each of the different sections, um, or you can skip the tour altogether. At the bottom, there are video tutorials, which you can play right within the app. Um, and these tutorials um, are just basically playing an embedded viewer in the app, so you just stay within the context in the, of the app, you watch them, and then you can get right to work. The Discover tab is also very interesting. Um, it's also um, has different kinds of sections. Um, at the very top, you can watch uh, artists um, that have done live streams in Fresco or have delivered content on Adobe Live. And you can also see a curated set of, uh, of illustrations in Fresco. And I know uh, we're talking to an education audience here. Uh, we're very careful to post art that is sort of PG-13, there's no inappropriate content here. Um, so there's no worry uh, in terms of what's being exposed to students. So um, moving right along, we can um, go ahead and talk about um, the interface itself. So let's uh, let's create a new document. So I just go here to create new and I will, I will select uh, the current screen size. So Here's what a blank uh, document looks like. I know it's a little daunting to be faced with a, a white canvas, but here it is. So the way the interface is organized is that on the left, you have all of your tools. We call this the toolbar. So you tap on the different tools over here to access them. Um, on the right hand side, we call it the taskbar, and it also contains the layer properties. So that's right, that's right over here. Um, so, uh, as I mentioned before, we have different kinds of um, we have different kinds of brushes in Fresco, and obviously, because Fresco is a drawing and painting application, the the brushes are front and center, right? That's the first thing that you encounter. So, uh, if I tap over here, I can see all of my pixel brushes, um, and they're divided into categories. So, there's all, and there's the favorites. So. For example, like uh, all has many different categories like basic and it has charcoal. So if I just kind of look at a few of these brushes, um, I can just, you know, check this out and see what it looks like. I can actually pull out the panel so that I don't have to keep opening it again. Like this, vine, uh, let's see, comics brushes, half tone. There's all kinds of really fun textures. There's a crackle. So you can imagine, you can do some really neat things with the brushes. Um, if I favorite a brush, right? So if I start a brush, then it will show up in my favorites list so I can easily get back to that brush, which is really handy. At the bottom of the pixel brushes menu, 
you will see a little plus sign. And the plus sign means that you can go and you can discover new brushes. So every quarter, um, Kyle T. Webster, who is our um, drawing and painting evangelist at Adobe and a prolific illustrator and amazing brush maker, he creates brushes for both Fresco as well as Photoshop. He creates these brush packs and you can just simply follow the brush pack. And the moment you follow it, it will actually show up um, right here. If you go under all, if you go to library brushes, the brush packs by Kyle will, will actually show up here. And you can just go ahead and tap on any brush and then use it, um, use it in your artwork. So that's really neat. Um, I also want to talk about vector brushes. So vector brushes, um, one thing to note about pixel brushes is also the name, right? Pixel. If I zoom in, you will see that uh, I can see, I can zoom in down to the individual pixel for that brush. Um, the vector brushes in contrast um, are a little different than that. So the vector brushes, they have uh, a more clean uh, look. They're not so textured. Um, tapering is really a, a, um, a characteristic of the vector brushes. But another characteristic is that if I zoom in on the canvas a lot, you will see that the vector brush uh, does, does not pixelate because it's a vector in contrast to the pixel brush where you can see the individual pixels. So depending on the style of art that you do, or if you want to print an artwork really large, you will decide if you were going to go the pixel way or the vector way. But guess what? If you're an artist um, that likes to do use both uh, vectors and pixels uh, on the same canvas, you can absolutely do so in Fresco. And Fresco is actually a unique in that way in that it combines both pixel brushes as well as vector brushes in the same application. Um, let's just hide this, hide these two um, layers so we can just start something new. Now what I want to do is show you a little bit about the, the watercolor brushes, which are really the characteristic of Fresco. So the watercolor brushes are technology that was created by the engineering team it's proprietary technology that allows basically to create watercolors that really and, and oil and oils that uh, really look like the real thing. So let's just pick a nice color over here, a little more saturated, and I will just paint on the canvas. And if let me just make this over here, the slider, the tool options allows me to, you know, make the size of the brush smaller or larger. It allows me to decide how much uh, paint is flowing through, and it allows me to specify for watercolors the water flow, like how much, how much water is flowing, and then uh, other parameters down here. So as you can see, like, like it's really like flowing. If I mix it with another color here, you will see sort of the effect of how the different colors really blend with each other you really feel like you're you're painting on an actual canvas with, with actual watercolors. It's really amazing. And we have this thing called the touch shortcut, which um, if you activate it, like if you if you activate it so that the center is blue, now what I'm doing, as you can see, is I'm just painting with pure water. It's almost like I just put some water on my uh, on my pencil or on my brush and without any pigment and I'm just painting with that. So that's how you paint with pure water. Uh, one thing that I forgot to mention earlier, but it's okay, I can mention it now, is that uh, using the touch shortcut, let's say I have a hard round brush here. Actually, let's pick a different brush, a comics brush. So as you can see, this brush is sort of a funny brush like this. If I take the touch shortcut and I activate it, then um, if I apply my brush on it, now it's removing pixels. So basically I'm erasing with the characteristics of that brush. I'm removing pigment with the characteristics of that brush uh, when I have the touch shortcut activated, which is really kind of neat. Um, one thing to also mention about, um, about the vector brushes and the touch shortcut. So one neat thing for people that like to draw with vectors Let's say I'm going to pick a vector brush. Let's make this a dark color. And let's say uh, I draw these lines on a layer. 
And I actually didn't want these extra little bits here. So one thing I could do is I could go and like manually erase them, or I could take the touch shortcut, uh, activate the secondary state by swiping out, and then simply by, uh, simply by, hold on a second. I have my vector brush, activate it. Yeah, simply by swiping, I'm trimming that segment. See, I'm just swiping through the segment and I'm getting rid of it. So that's kind of how simple it is to just, just remove the extra bits. It's, it's a very neat um, shortcut tool to remove extra bits from, from your um, vector, uh, vector strokes. Um, another thing that's really neat to mention are, um, is our selections and transforms. So if I pick the selection tool here, I can, I can just select different areas and I can transform using the transform tool and I can move, I can, I can move and transform. So let me just do it again. So I can select, I can fill the section here with a color, let's say, see it's filled. And then I can transform the selection so I can move it around the canvas. I can transform it, make it bigger or larger. So that's how that works. Um, let's see, let's hide this and go on to the next thing I want to show you. Um, and the next thing I want to show you has to do with clipping masks. So um, I'm going to deselect this. So let's draw, I'm gonna use a vector brush, uh, change this to blue, I'm gonna draw a fish. Uh, Draw a fish over here, like this. Use the paint bucket to fill it in. Um, I can take the brush, quite that, and then I'm going to add a. I'm going to add some circles over here. I'm going to use the drawing. The drawing aids over here to draw different circles around the canvas and you'll see in a minute where I'm going with this. So I'm going to fill this with vector. Sorry, vector color. Different colors here. Get different color for this one. Let's see here. You'll, you'll see what I mean in a second. So, okay. Um, what I actually want, I want to confine what I just drew to the fish. So to do that, I highlight the layer that I just looked at, select the clipping masks, and guess what? Now I'm clipping um, the, I'm non-destructively clipping uh, the pattern that was on the top to the fish that was below. So you can see that that can have some really beautiful ways in which you can organize your art. And if I don't want the clip, I can just remove the clipping mask or I can add it back in. So that's how clipping masks work. Okay, um, the next thing I want to show is like one of my really favorite features of Fresco. Let me just hide this layers for a second. Um, and what this is, is the multicolor eye drop. And this has become almost viral in social media. People are really uh, excited to use it. So. Uh, just imagine if I had a number of different colors on my canvas. So let's say I have my um, my basic brush, my hard round brush. So I'm going to create a new layer here, move it up to the top. It's very easy to move layers in your layer start. You just um, drag them and you paste them where you want. So I just uh, let me just pick a different brush here, more uh, more straightforward brush. I want a hard round brush. There we go. There's a hard round brush. I'm just going to paint a number of different colors just so that I can demonstrate the concept for you. Here we go. So let's say, for example, I wanted to sample and paint with all these colors all at once. So to do that, I first select the eyedrop tool um, and I select this option here at the bottom and then I move the eyedrop over those colors. As you can see, 
uh, over here on the top right, it shows you what kind of colors are being sampled. You know, I kind of like that. I go back to my brush and now what I can do is I can actually paint with all those colors all at once. I mean, anyone can have a lot of fun using this, this feature. It's just so fun and it looks so multidimensional. I think uh, any one of us can pick it up and create like just a masterpiece, I think. Um, so that's the multicolor eye drop. Uh, I'm going to hide this one. And the next thing I want to show you are capture shapes. So if you uh, tap on the capture shapes on the right, uh, let me see, let me, let me see what capture shapes. I want to show you this one. So make it a little smaller here. So this is a capture shape that you can put on the canvas. And what can you do with it? You can fill it. So for example, I can fill it. Um, sorry, I have a hidden layer. I can fill it over here. Let's say it asks me, I want it to be a vector layer. And then I can decide to rotate it a little bit and change the color slightly. Fill that. And then rotate it a little bit more. And fill it with yet a different color over here. As you can see, you can create some really neat things. You can change the size of it. Mm. But guess what? What you can also do is you can subtract color. So, for example, like I can move this shape, let's say over here, rotate it a little bit. Actually, before, yeah. And then we can just do erase. So now what I'm doing is I'm actually removing pigment from the canvas based on the shape uh, that I just stamped down there. Um, and I know that one thing I want to mes mes mention about capture shapes is that you can actually create these shapes in Adobe Capture, which is another application. So with your phone, it's a very simple application to use. You just snap on any image uh, you want and that converts it into a vector. And that vector gets, uh, vector shape gets saved into a library, which you can then bring into Fresco and use it in Fresco, which is really kind of cool. So let's say you're a sketch note taker and you have all kinds of shapes like arrows or bubbles that you're really interested in combining with your sketch notes, you can create those in Capture, bring them over to Fresco and stamp them and use them in your in your sketch notes. So that's kind of one neat application um, that you can use with, with that. Um, so that's Capture Shapes. I also want to talk a little bit about Capture uh, brushes, ribbon brushes. So what's really cool is you can go over here. I've created actually some capture brushes before. Um, you can go to library brushes here, and I think I have them in my library somewhere. Let me just find it. My library, Ladybug. So I created in capture a Ladybug brush, and what can I do with it? I can actually paint with it. See? So you can just imagine that you can basically create your own brush using any image you want and, and you can just draw these amazing things, amazing fun things on the canvas. And I think, I really think students can get really super creative with that. Um, talked about clipping masks. The next thing I can talk about are masks itself. So uh, what I want to talk about here is you can, you can mask any layer. And what that means is, let's say I'm on this ladybug layer, right? And I can, let's fill this layer with the color. Okay, so now I can actually fill all of this. Great, all is filled in. Now what I want to do is I want to create a mask. So I want to create an empty mask and the way it works is that this is the mask part over here. So here I can manipulate the mask. So I want to, uh, I want to hide. So wherever wherever this red appears, it's going to be hidden from the main layer, right? So here I'm drawing this. So if you go back to the main layer, you will see that wherever I drew the mask, the pigment will, will not come through. So that's kind of how that works. I can actually use any brush over here. So for example, I can use uh, like one of the comics brushes to create a mask 
you know, to paint with my mask like this. And if I go back to my main layer, you, you will see that wherever I painted with that, the pigment is not coming through. So that's kind of how masks work. It's really neat. Neat and also easy, I would say. Um, let me hide that. Um, and the next thing I want to do is I want to show you um, text. So we have text supporting fresco. So over here, I can just put some text in there. Um, and what I can do is I can, I can just type something like, uh, let's see, I can type welcome. Welcome. Style text. So I can, let's see what I can do. I can change the, I can change this. Let me just select it first. I can just change the size of the text. I can change spacing if I had like, um, let's see if I had another over here. Enter. Ah, here. Okay. Here. Okay, so if I enter, Okay, so welcome, enter everyone, perfect. So now if I change the spacing, it changes the spacing between the words, right? I can change the kerning over here and so on. The other cool thing, my favorite thing though, is that you have different kinds of fonts to choose from. And you basically just tap on any font that you like here and you can change the font accordingly. So it's just super fun uh, to work with different fonts. Um, and you can also bring in your own fonts um, if you want to. So here are more fonts, all kinds of fonts. It's really fun to just play around and try different ones. Um, great, so that's text. I want to talk to you about adjustment layers. So to talk about adjustment layers, uh, I think the best thing to do is to bring in some artwork over here. This is one of the uh, pieces of art that was created by uh, one of our Haitian um, commission artists, Pierre Richard. Um, he is an amazing artist. Um, he just created this beautiful Haitian deity uh, in fresco and um, using this I want to show you how you can very easily change the tone and color of your artwork without um, non-destructively so I can just um, click here for adjustments so for example I want to change the brightness and contrast of this piece so it adds this thing called an adjustment layer and I can just simply um, Oh, small problem. Okay, so I can just simply move, uh, move, move the slider over here um, to change the brightness or the contrast of this layer. Um, I can also change hue and saturation. So you can do some kind of really dramatic changes if you want to by color or saturation. Change the lightness of the piece. And it's just really fun that you can do all of that. But hey, if you don't like the changes that you made, you can simply hide those adjustments and you can just go back to your original like nothing happened. Um, the next thing I want to show is motion. Uh, and motion is a really kind of highly anticipated feature in Fresco as well. Um, I not notice that I'm not really calling it animation because it's really it's really more about um, adding some ambient motion to your artwork. Um, a lot of illustrators say they would get paid more if they had some uh, motion attributes in their artwork, and this is what we're aiming, uh, aiming for here. So for motion, for example, like one thing that we added for this piece, let me just here. So if I add the I'm just going to tap to add the motion over here. So you can just play it. So this, this should be frame by frame motion. If 
I play all, this works. You should see the sun moving up and down if this works. There we go. So you see the different frames they're moving. You can see that as the sun moves up through the horizon. So it's just a very simple motion that's happening here. It's a little bit slow right now, but it just kind of gives you an idea of what the motion, uh, how the motion works. You see the sun just went down and, and as it moves through, it, it, will, it will rise again. But um, let's say, for example, I wanted the stars to move. I wanted to create a more interesting in play with the stars. So besides frame by frame, I can also add paths. So what does that mean? So I can just pause that one um, and select the stars over here. Uh, I want to add path over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, oops, to add a path. So I'm, just, just, I'm going to draw the path in which I want the stars to move. And as you can see, the stars are now moving. Um, so it's really neat how you can just scatter them. You can add more of them if you want to. Um, and then I can pause that and you can play all. You can see it's kind of neat how how you can have the different effects. I think I have too many too many stars. Let's reduce them a little bit and play again. There we go. There's the properties. And if you want to remove the motion, you simply uh, click on the X here or go to the path symbol and just remove the animation. An easier way to see the motion paths is in this other piece that I have here. I'm going to save this and exit and open another piece. Over here, so this is another uh, amazing artist, Paula Cruz from Brazil. Um, and she created these different skater girls. And let's say, for example, I want the skater girl to move all around in my drawing. So in here, I will choose path, and then I will just draw the path in which I want her to move. Um, and if I play it, you can see that she's just like skating all around the canvas. If I want more of her, I can just tap two, and then I can see more of these skaters on the canvas. I can scatter them around and so on. So it's kind of neat what you can do with motion. Um, the next but not least feature that I want to show you, and these are sneaks, by the way, the adjustment layers in motion are not quite out in the production app just yet, but, but they will be. Um, so let me just create a new document, current size, and I will go to my shapes. I have a shape that I created over here. I'm going to make it sort of big and, um, and fill it with uh, black. In a moment, bring the shape back in. Okay, so, oops, so, so, oops, that's not what I wanted to do. Sorry, I'm going to bring in, bring in the capture shape over here, fill it. A pixel. There we go. And what I can do is you can see that I can use a reference layer. So the way to do that is I'm going to add another layer on the top of it. And I'm going to show you how adjustment layers work. So um, not adjustment layers. I want to show you how you're able to set this as a reference layer. So this first layer that I put is my reference layer. Um, and uh, you know what? I made a mistake. Let me just redo that because it needs to be right now. It's only working for um, fill. Sorry, here. I'll hide it. Fill. Okay. 
Let me just delete this and start over so you can see what this looks like. Okay, so I want to fill it, convert layer to a pixel layer. Perfect, this is what I wanted. Now, this layer that I have here, I want to set it as a reference layer. And now what I can do is change the color of different parts of this layer. Over here, I want to fill with yellow pixel. So you can see that I'm adding different layers on top of the reference layer, but they're different colors. So basically, I'm able to color my line art without um, affecting the original line work. And this is a non-destructive operation because these layers, I can always just hide them or I can change them. Let's say now I changed my mind and I wanted a different, uh, I wanted a different color. Um, that way I can just color my line art with different pixels, with different colors without affecting my original piece. So this is a really amazing non-destructive non way. So the last thing I wanted to show you over here um, are, is live streaming. So let's say I created this um, amazing piece of art. Let's say I have this motion piece and I want to, I'm not done with it, but I want to show my process to my users. So what I want to do is I want to live stream um, my process. So what I do is I go to uh, live stream here. And basically, um, you, you have a webcam, which is a little bit of a nose cam, which is not as flattering, but you can add a title and then you can basically start broadcasting. You can copy the URL and send it to your audience. But what happens is you, you are basically able to uh, stream whatever you're drawing to your audience on Behance. So it's a really neat way to get to your followers, to get people to watch behind your shoulder as you draw. And as you know, on Behance, we have a number of different live streams um, that you can watch. So that's all I wanted to share in terms of a demo. I'm going to uh, not mirror my screen anymore, and I want to go back to my slides just to show you a little bit of um, stop mirroring. I want to go back and cl close with uh, the roadmap of Fresco. So let's see, play. Let's and pull the slide. So let's talk about the Fresco roadmap. So uh, this is essentially the, the Fresco roadmap month by month. The neat thing about Fresco is that we have releases every single month. Uh, and in red, you will see all the key features or all the key features in Fresco, like um, sending to Adobe Illustrator on, on, the, on the desktop from Fresco, inviting others to edit your document, um, being able to select and move multiple layers, drawing aids, and so on. So um, actually one thing I forgot to mention is that um, Fresco also has um, graph grids and perspective grids. So that's another thing if you if you're really interested in, um, in I'll, I'll go back and show it real quick. If you're really interested in, in drawing and having a grid behind it, like say if you're doing some photorealistic drawing, graph grids are really important. So you can use those or you can pers have, use perspective grids with one, two and three point um, vanishing points. Um, so what I wanna highlight here is that, of course, usability, stability and performance are top of mind for anything we do in Fresco, as well as uh, making the app accessible uh, for everyone and um, we have releases every single month and toward max we're looking to release our perspective grids uh, as well as our motion that I just showed you um, as well as font and text on our Windows platform. Um, so before I go uh, actually I'll just finish the slides and I'll go back if we have time and I will show you grids. So what I want to highlight here is that uh, just this week, actually last week, we delivered uh, a Fresco curriculum for educators. It's a four hour course that you can access on the Adobe Education Exchange. Super excited about that. Um, the class is titled Digital Painting and Drawing in the Classroom. So we invite you all to come and check it out. I'm really excited about this content and we're looking to create even more. 
Um, if you're interested in joining our pre-release program, just simply send us an email to with your Adobe ID to frescohelp at adobe.com. Uh, if you have any questions for what you just saw today, or if you come up with questions about um, Fresco in general, just send me an email at elsergio at adobe.com. And um, if I can do this quickly, then I will also show you the grids that I forgot to show you earlier. Let me just see how quickly I can do this. Okay. Let's see. Okay. Great. You should be seeing my screen momentarily, I believe. Great. I'm going to go in. All right. So, yeah, what I forgot to show is the graph grid. So, basically, you can uh, you can show the the grids on the canvas. So, if you you just change this toggle, you set it to on, and suddenly you have you have a grid on your canvas. And what you can do is you can change the spacing on your grid. You can make the spacing really small or really big. Uh, you can change the opacity of your grid. Uh, let me just not make it so big. There we go. You can change the opacity so you can make it really light or really dark, depending on how you want to see it. Um, and also, like if you want, instead of a graph grid, if you want to see the perspective grid, then here you go. You have the perspective grid and you can have your vanishing point, like with one point or two point perspective or three points. So uh, this is kind of how that is. And that is all about grids. Uh, and that also concludes my demo. I hope you enjoyed it. And as I mentioned before, if you have any questions, please do not hesitate to ask. Thank you very much.